and we're going to install the two column car lifter. This is the four ton model, but in fact all models are about the same in terms of installation. Now, when you receive the package, it's going to come in different parts. You have the big unit over here, which are the two columns. And they are mounted together or held together with a rig on either side. Inside the pillars, you will find a lot of other parts like the uh, safety protection. You will find also the uh, arms for the bridge. And they may be a little bit more difficult to get out. There we go. And this really feels heavy, so that is really good quality. And then uh, we've got the steel cable. And inside the smaller box you will find first of all the instruction manual. That's very important. Have a look in that because it lists all the parts that you should have with this uh, lift. You also have a, a bag with nuts and bolts to put everything together. You got the mechanical anchors. You got 10 of them and that's going to become very important. We also got some sensors, we've got some covers, the hoses, we got uh, electromagnetic relays uh, which will disengage the lift when it needs to descend and you have of course the adjustable foot uh, that you can put on the arms so you can actually adjust the height of it. In the other car box you will find the motor unit which is the hydraulic pump and the reservoir and then finally uh, you will find the cover panel that goes on the floor and the control box is also inside one of the pillars but I can't get it out right now because the top column is in the way. And here you have the hydraulic motor, the motor and the hydraulic pump and the reservoir. Uh, if you order up the bridge make sure that you specify uh, the motor for the right voltage. So if you have 220 volts, monophase, specify it. If you're planning to install the lift yourself then be aware that the weight is quite heavy. This is 600 kilograms, so there is no way you can lift this on your own. You might need a couple of people, but in essence you should have some lifting equipment. And that's what I'm going to use right now because I'm on my own. So I'm going to lift the top pillar off and disconnect it from its fixture. And now we gently lift it. So remember, you need to support the column once you are removing the bolts that are holding the column into place onto the fixture. You might to jiggle a bit up and down with your forklift or whatever tool you have so that the bolts come out very easily. So now it's time to lift it all up. And to remove the fixture from the bottom pillar we do exactly the same but now I'm going to use a pallet lift to lift up the bottom column so I can undo the bolts on the fixture. And now we can unbolt the bottom part. We've got all, all the support brackets are removed, so now we can pull out the bottom pillar. So we removed the brackets from the two columns and now we need to install the first column. And the first one to be installed is the one where the motor, the hydraulic motor is going to be mounted on. And that's the one where you find inside these cables. You'll find a hydraulic hose and you find some other cables here. That's the one we need to install first, so it is this one. So before we install the first column, we have to find the right spot where we want to have it on the work floor. Now keep in mind that you have to make sure that the ceiling is high enough because the column by itself is about 3 meters high and it will lift up to 1 meter 90. So uh, if you add the height of the car to that, then you're ending up very quickly with about 3 meters 20, 3 meters 40. So make sure the ceiling is high enough. Make sure that you have enough space around uh, the bridge as well or the lift because that's important. And in between the pillars, uh, we have a span of about 3 meters as well. In fact, here we show 2 meters at 80, uh, but that's 
at the inside. You need to look at the outside. So that's going to be about three meters as well. And you have to have some space around the motor. So these are all things that are very important when you're going, going to install it. So find the right space, first of all. But that's and the most important part is the floor. You must have a level, solid, hard concrete floor with a thickness between 15 to 20 centimeters. That is very important because the foot of the pillar or the column will sit on the concrete and you need to bolt it down with anchors. And these anchors are provided with it, but we'll talk about it in a few minutes. And if these foot are not very well held in place, the column can collapse and you don't want to have that to happen. You don't want to be under the car or you don't want to have your best car dropping down because your pillar is collapsing. Keep also in mind that the pillars must be straight up, vertical and in all directions. So the concrete must be flat. You have a tolerance of 0.5 um, centimeters, but for the rest, uh, you really should consider a good and solid bonding of the foot to the ground, to the concrete floor. If your concrete slab isn't thick enough, don't take risks. Then dig a hole and pour some concrete. In the package you will find 10 mechanical M18 locking bolts. So you need to drill the hole of the sufficient depth and then uh, knock them in on the top and then this part will then slide in and it will expand. I'm not going to use this because this is causing some stress on the concrete. I'm going to use a chemical bond which I think is a bit better. Instead of using mechanical bonding methods like these bolts, I'm going to use chemical bonding. And this is a two component product that will actually glue in the bolts into the concrete. So now that we have to drill the holes in the concrete, I want to make sure that I have them in the right spot. And I'm going to use a template for that one. I'm using an old piece of plywood, nothing special. And I'm just going to put it along the edge there and there, and then I'm going to mark it with a pen, and then I know exactly where everything is. And of course, there's one hole that I is a bit more difficult to get to. And that's over here somewhere. We already drilled the holes in it, and we made sure it aligned with the foot of the column. And now I'm just going to paint it with black. And that's it. So first I will pre-drill the hole with a smaller bit. The depth is nearly 20 centimeters anyway, so we are good. So I'm gonna pre-drill the other holes and then I'll finally drill it with a drill 20. And then I will fill up those holes uh, with this um, chemical bonding. The holes that we just drilled were 20 millimeters. They are two millimeters bigger than the actual threaded um, bar that we're gonna put in. And now we need to make sure that all the dust goes out. That's very important. So we need to clean all this up very nicely. And you need to do this about three times. So now I'm gonna cut some threaded rods out of this bar at 18 centimeters to put them in the holes that we just made. And here's the first bar. We cut all the threaded rods and see if they fit. And that looks quite all right. And notice I always keep the template in place because that's the way I'm gonna make sure that everything is gonna fit. There we go, so that looks quite good. Um, you might have noticed while I was cutting the bars that I did it under an angle. The reason that I did cut the bars at an angle of 10 degrees is it makes it so much easier to put the nut on later. There we go.
I'm using a pulley to lift up the first column. Going to turn it the way she has to be. We've lowered the pillar and now we can tighten them down to the ground. But don't tighten it all the way because you may have to adjust the level of the pillar. So we're going to need a big washer and then we're going to need a big locking ring and then the nuts. So we're going to lock it down a little bit in the beginning but not too much so the pillar doesn't fall over but I'm not gonna lock it down all the way because I still may have to adjust the pillar. It's of extreme importance that the pillars are absolutely upright in all directions. So you will need a level meter to do that and then measure the level in all kinds of directions. If the pillar is not level whatsoever, then you may have to use a couple of shims underneath the base plate of the pillar before you tighten down the nuts and bolts. Now that we have installed the first pillar and secured it to the ground, now we can install the second pillar. I already have it more or less in place, but to find its final position, because you need to have the right distance between the two pillars, I'm using this metal ground shield that comes with the two column lift. And I slide it underneath the first pillar that we already bolted down to the ground. Now all I need to do is move in this pillar into this gap here and then just bolt it down. I'm not going to bolt this one down with a template. That was one example. I'm going to bolt it down straight through the holes. Uh, these are two different methods and it's up to you which one you prefer, but I just wanted to show you the two. Just make sure that you don't catch the cables in between the metal because that wouldn't be all that good, would it? So let's see if we can move this in now, slowly. I think this is about it. Have a look. Yeah, that looks quite good. Push it a bit more. There we go. Measure the distance between the two columns and make sure that it's the same both on the top and at the bottom because that is very important and check it with your building plan. Now we're going to drill the holes for the camel car anchors and I'm going to do it with the pillar in place. The next thing we're going to install are the electromagnetic plungers and these are the plungers, there's four of them, two on each column and those are a safety device and that's why this uh, lift has a C certificate. Uh, other lifts that I've seen similar to this one don't have that. The mechanism is as follows, um, you've got a blocking mechanism and you've got to make sure when you fit it in that it's fitted in with the cutouts facing the inside uh, where the car is actually. So that's going to go through there like this and then that will be sitting on a support at the inside. So when the lift goes up it's going to toggle and block and when the lift has to go down the electromagnetic will pull back and then this whole system will be pulled back and then the lift can descend. So you're going to need this metal piece and make sure when you mount it that you mount it with the cutout piece towards the side of the car. This electromagnetic has to be mounted on the back side of the pillars or the columns and you're going to need to do it with four short Phillips screws. Now use the short ones, not the long ones, so they shouldn't be sticking out inside the pillar. And then you will need an additional element which is kind of a little clamp which is this clamp here, which will hold this locking plate in place. And that you need to fit in like so. So that's going to go in very simple in the cutout again, like so, and hold it. And again, it's going to be fixed through the back of the column. So these are the things we got to do now. Not very complicated, and I'll give you a few close-ups. This is very important because that's the safety latch. 
That is also why this lift is C certified, because other lifts don't have that mechanism. So this is an electrical locking mechanism. Just above the piston, you will find the first locking position. And there's another one higher up. So we're going to fit the first electromagnet. It's going to go through the back. And then, look at this panel, how this is supposed to be. Slide it on like this. Very important. See? So whenever uh, the magnet is engaged, they will pull back that. See? That's very important that that mechanism is working. Installing the electromagnetic plunger is very easy. Just make sure that you have these wires coming out of the unit facing towards the bigger cable that you have here because that's going back to your control unit. Then get some of those short Phillips screws and put them in. Make sure that you use the short ones because otherwise it's going to stick through the inside and then the whole locking mechanism is not going to work. Now check that the plunger has free play. The next step is to mount this metal bracket. This is the locking panel that will lock the lift and make sure that the cutout is facing this side. Just put it over the plunger and hold it like this. That's all you need to do. Now, to hold that in place and to secure it, you're going to need this little piece of metal and I've showed it to you before. It's kind of an attachment and it's threaded, so you need to fit a Phillips screw from the other side through the hole and then lock this in place. So, let me place it there. That's a little bit of fiddling. And if you were two, this is so much easier. Working alone is always a little bit more difficult, but this will work. There we go. So I'm using a longer Phillips screw in the back, and I'm locking it in. And I'm going to use a second screwdriver to keep that a bit straight while I'm tightening the Phillips screw in the back. There we go. So now, this whole mechanism is safely in place. Nothing can happen with it. And make sure that this mechanism works. Check it out. Because this is your safety. This is the catch that will catch the lift. So now it's time to fit the steel cables. And before we can do that, we'll have to lift up to its first locking mechanism on both sides. And that is why we fitted the electromagnetic plungers first. Otherwise, you can't lock the lift. If this is a bit heavy, and if you have two people, it's easier. Um, but you need to lift it up until you hear the first click. Here we go. Did you hear that click? That's the first position. So I'm going to do this on the other side as well, and then we can start running the cables. Now for the cable run, have a close look on your instruction manual. It's clearly explained, but I'll show it as well, and if it isn't clear enough, have another check on your instruction manual. And here is the steel cable. We got two steel cables, and we will have to install them on the shuttle from the left to the right. And the whole purpose of the steel cable is to run the shuttles in sync. So they should go up at the same page, they should come down at the same page, and there should be no difference. That's why you need to lock it in its first position on both the left and the right column, and then run the cables. Once we have run the cables, we'll then do the cable tensioning adjustment, and then finally we'll have to grease the cable, because you've got to grease the cable, that's very important. You're not greased right now because it would make too much of a mess, but once you're done, you've got to grease it. All right. The shuttle glides inside the column on nylon blocks and you can see the white block all the way in the back there. And it's good practice before installing the cables to grease the sliding area of those nylon blocks. And first of all we're going to clean it with a cloth and then we grease it. Now I am using a white lithium grease but you can use any type of grease you want. So first I'm going to connect the cable, which is going to go up to the shuttle of the column that is holding the motor. And guys, this is a little bit of fiddling to get all this in, but um, it will work. 
and I'm going to leave it all the way extended for now. And I'm not going to tighten it down. So now I'm going to run up the cable all the way to the top pulley. And the cable which is now coming down, route through the shovel. At the bottom of the column, route the cable from the back of the pulley to the front. And then pull the cable to the other pillar. Take it to the back of the pulley and route it inside the shovel. Pull out the cable and connect a nut to it. Let's take a washer over it and try to feed it through the hole in the back of the shuttle. There we go. Again, uh, put a washer up and a nut. There you go. So a nut in the bottom, a washer, a washer and a nut. And that way we can then adjust the cable tension later on. But right now, that's not what we're going to do. First of all, we now will install the second cable. So for the second cable, we're going to do exactly the same. We'll hook it up to the shuttle, to the outer part. The cable goes up over the top pulley, back down through the shuttle to the other side, and then back up to the shuttle on the other side, just like we've done on this one, but it's just the opposite direction. Once both cables are in place, we need to tighten them up. For me, the easiest way is to use kind of a lever and then tighten the nut. Adjust the tension on the cables by adjusting the nuts here by either putting it further down or more up and make sure that both cables have the same tension. And then just pull on the cable and check the tension and that feels about right. The next thing we're going to do is to install the hydraulic hose between the two pillars and make sure that you get no dust or dirt inside these connectors because that wouldn't be very good. Remove the protective cap and normally you would have a protective cap on this side but I already pulled it off and I lost it unfortunately so I put some plastic on it. Right, make sure it's clean and try to hook it up. You may turn this piston a little bit. Tighten it down well but not over tighten it because you don't want to have an oil leak. And now run the cable to the other side where we do exactly the same. So the next thing is to install the motor and what I have done is pre-installed the bolts already on the pillar so I can just hook it on to it. Um, it's up to you how you want to do that but I'm on my own so I have to make things a bit easier for myself. One other thing you will see on this motor is that there's already a short power cable coming out of it. Now obviously uh, we'll have to change that but that's what we're going to discuss and look at while we're doing the electrical installation of this bridge together with all the electromagnets and all the safety measures and the control box. So for now don't worry about this. I pre-positioned the bolts in the bracket so that makes it easy to hang the unit on it otherwise you have to hold it and try to put the bolt through and that's very hard to do. Uh, so now I just need to tighten it up and we all set. The next step is to feed the hydraulic hose for the motor and the cables through that hole. Now that hole typically does not have a grommet in it so you have grommets and this is a grommet uh, with the kit and you have to put it in before you put the cables through so that way you don't damage the cables. So. Um, it's probably best first to feed the hydraulic cable. See now guys, that's why um, I have not greased the cables yet because otherwise you would be all greasy. And let's feed the control cables for the motor. There's one cable for the uh, electromagnet on the motor, the relief valve, and one to drive the motor. Next we're going to install a few safety measures. This one is actually the bottom switch so when the lift is all the way at the bottom it will toggle that switch and it will stop the lift. That's one. 
and we'll also have to have the upper limiter switch which we have to mount on the top of the column where the motor is mounted on and then we need to feed the cable back to the control unit. So when the lift goes up it will actually toggle the switch and it will turn off the motor. Next is the control box. Uh, this is the box where you control the lift with up, down, lock and so on, emergency, etc. And in the back you find a couple of threaded holes and that's how we're going to fix it to the pillar. All right. So this is always a little bit of fiddling if you work on your own, but we got it in the spot and that's good. So now let's put the second screw in and then we should be good to go. So control box is in place. And now um, we will continue with the cabling. Right, so we're going to install, we're going to install the lower limiting switch. And for that you have a little a Phillips screw, you need to fit it from the back, lock it in place, and here it is. The upper limiting switch has some adjustments. There is an inbus here and an inbus there, and you will need to adjust that once this limiter is on the column. And this is how it will be mounted in the column, vertical down. But when the lift moves up, it's going to hit this wheel, and as you can see, it's going to be tough to toggle it that way. So we need to move this arm a little bit. And you do that by untightening the inbus and then just give it a few turns. So you're sitting under an angle and then we should be good. So now when the lift comes up, it will push nicely. We may have to extend this arm as well and that's what you do with this little screw here. Let me show you that. So now, see, we can now extend the arm as well. Where we need to set it, I don't know yet. We'll see that once it's installed. The cable will have to run in the back side, um, like so, and back to the control unit. Um, and you can see now it's sitting in the proper position and it will flip up as soon as the lift comes up. So now we need to remove the shields uh, so we can run the cable inside the shield and then feed it through the hole back to the control panel. Now that we have all the mechanical parts installed and we don't need to mess around anymore inside the columns, we can grease the steel cables and therefore use a good quality grease and just use your hands and go along with it and grease them really nice and smooth. Greasing the cables is a bit of a greasy job, but it has to be done, it's for your safety. So now we are about ready to start working on the electrical circuits on this uh, lift. If you don't feel comfortable with electricity or electrical installations, then ask someone that knows about this. It's not complex, but still, if you are not comfortable, then I would say don't do it, because it's always about safety and safety first. First of all, we're going to connect all the electromagnetic plungers on the columns. This one is in the middle, there is another one all the way on the top. And you'll have a wire coming out of the pillar, which is a loop, and you need to cut that wire. One side of this cable is coming from the top plunger, and the second one is going down to the other side of the bridge. So now we need to connect those cables together. So we stripped the wires, and now we're going to put the blue together with the blue wire and the brown one with the brown one and we'll hook it up to one of those sugar cubes as we call them. And we do the same with the brown wire. You can use other connectors if you want but I like these because it's quite handy. Now all what's left to do is connect the wires from the solenoid to those uh, sugar cubes and we are done. And to keep it in place, uh, we're going to use a little tie wrap. And that's it. And finally, we're going to put the cover up. And this is it. Now we will do the top one and then I'll do the other side. Exactly the same way. 
So the next thing to do is to install the lower limit switch and cable all that up. And therefore we have to remove the lid, I already removed the screw, so take that off. And in fact there is even a, a seal in there, so uh, I removed that already. Now you have four contacts. Uh, the wire has to go between this one and that one. Uh, the reason for that is that it's a make-break contact, so depending on what you want to do. So if the lift is going down and it reaches the lower level, then you want to break the contract. We need to feed the cable through the housing, so it's sealed off. Already stripped the wires. And now we need to hook them up to the contacts. All right. And now it's time to connect the control box. And it's important that you connect the right cable to the right pin. And therefore, you should label all your cables. If you're not sure what cable is what, trace it down in the columns, find out what sensor it is, find out what electromagnet it is, and then label it, because you're gonna to need to know it on how to connect it to the inside of the box. You feed the cables through the bottom of the box, and there are some um, protected seals in there, so make sure that you feed it through. And have a look on the connection diagram itself. It's in the documentation, but if you're in doubt, have a look here. I have it here displayed and you can see what all the connections are. So if you open up the box, don't drop it. Instead, I'm going to tape it to the top with some paper tape. So that way, it's out of the way and it cannot drop and it doesn't stretch the cables. Inside the control box, you will find the connection points for the different cables and you need to feed the cables through these feeding holes. Your mains input, if it's a 220 lift monophase, it's ground, L1 and N. The electromagnet for the pressure relief on the oil pump is connected to YY. The top limiting switch is connected to AVAV. QQ is the connector for the electromagnets that will lock and unlock the bridge. And then you have D1, D2, and D3, and the ground. These are the leads going towards the power of your motor. Now, in our case, we only need the D1 because we only have one phase on the motor. We also have one phase of input, so we're going to use D1. And, of course, we also use the AA is connected to the lower limiting switch. Remove the cover from the electromotor and hook up the cabling. I connected the solenoid for the pressure relief valve on the motor to the cable coming from the control unit. And I'm using just standard automotive connectors as this is only 24 volts. Oil tank. Filling up the oil tank of the hydraulic pump requires hydraulic oil and you're going to need about 10 liters of it. So once it's filled up all the way to the top, we can close it up and then we do an overall inspection. If everything is tied down, all connectors are well sealed and connected and then we can actually move ahead and start a dry run. Now we're going to install the lifting arms and we have two short ones and two long ones. So they always need to be installed in pairs, a short one and a long one per column. Installing a lift arm is easy. On the shuttles you need to remove the circlip and this is a circlip from the bottom of this uh, rod and then you can actually uh, pull out this rod like so. Now what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to grease a little bit the area where I will have friction. And a little bit in the hole. So this is a short arm and they are pretty heavy. So you might need some help while you're trying to put this in. And if you install the arm, make sure that there are no bolts on this side. All the bolts should be on this side. That's where you have the black bolts, that's where you should connect the protection shield. With the arm in place, then install the protection shield, so you can't put your feet under there. This is a safety feature. You don't have to, but it's recommended that you do, and just bolt it down. If you need to, if you need to swing the arm in and out, pull on this ring, that unlocks it and then you can actually turn it and then let go again to have it back in place. And don't forget to put the circlip at the bottom of the rod. 
This is the pad that needs to be installed at the end of the arm lift and it goes inside this hole and you will see that there's a metal block here and a bit of a cutout here. So make sure that it fits in the right way, like so, so it, the bottom part can turn. And like anything else, I will grease this up a bit. So put it in, make sure it locks and then turn it all the way in and then install the circlip in this groove. So far we have installed the columns, we secured them down to the ground, we installed the cables, we installed the shuttles, we greased everything, we installed the control box, we cabled everything up, so now we are finally ready. Do a last minute inspection on all the elements that you did install that everything is done correctly because right now we're going to do a trial lift with this lift. Now, we're not gonna put a car on it yet. First, we have still to do some adjustments and some verifications to make sure that everything is working properly. The shuttles have to move at the same time. And while they're moving up, you will hear the locking clicks. And they both should click at the same time. If they do not, then we'll have to readjust the cables. That's the first thing. The second thing is once the lift in its parking position, it's locked in place and you want to descend the lift. The lift have to go up a bit to de-stress the locking mechanism and then the lift will go down. The time it goes up is a settable time and that's inside the control box. There is a little timer inside that you can adjust. But right now we're gonna try first of all the first lift test. Before we start lifting, make sure that the chain is over the rollers on the hydraulic pistons on both the left and the right hand side. And you need to keep a close eye on the piston which is on the column without the motor. And the reason for that is that it's going to take a little bit more time for the oil to get into the piston. The piston which is closest to the motor will be fed earlier, so it's going to go up. And because of the cable system, both shuttles will lift up. But the piston on the far end side, the one on the column without the motor, may not start lifting. So it's going to take a little bit of time before that starts to lift. And it may be then the chain slips off. So you need to keep an eye on that. That's only the first time. After that, everything will be all right. Inside the control box you will find the timer and this is the unlock timer. So that's the timer that will set the time that the lift goes up to de-stress the locking system before the lift goes down again. Now it's set to about 1.2, 1.5 seconds, which is probably good enough. If it is not, then you can adjust it by rotating uh, this knob here. Also in the control box you will find your main uh, breaker and fuse. Make sure that it's turned on to the up position before you start using it, otherwise it won't really work. So before we do the trial lift, let's have a quick look on the controls. You've got an emergency stop, it should be out. If you want to stop it immediately because something is wrong, push the button. Unlock it and it should be out. If it's depressed in, you cannot start anything. This button here says hoch. it means lift upwards. This button means lift downwards and you will see when you push this button, the lift will go up shortly depending on the timer and then it will descend. And the last one is actually the parking or the locking position. So if you move the lift up to its position where you want to have it and you have heard the click, then you let this up switch go and then you push once the down switch and then you will hear an, an audible alarm and it will park the lift onto the locking system. Don't forget that. And on the top of the control box, we have an audible alarm that will beep whenever we're putting the lift in a locking position. And then we of course have the green light indicating that mains is applied. And on the side, you've got your main toggle switch. So let's turn it on and start working. So now I'm gonna push the button up and the lift will go upwards. If it's your first time that you do it, keep an eye on that piston on the other side where the motor is not attached to the column, that it, the chain is still on top of the piston as I explained before, and then while the lift is moving up, we're going to listen to the clicks. And the locking clicks should happen exactly at the same time. If not, we need to adjust. So hopefully you can hear the clicks. So let's give it a try. Did you hear that? Did you hear the click? That column clicked a fraction of a second earlier than that one. Now that means that both shuttles are not on the same height. So I will have to adjust 
that one. That click came later. So now we need to adjust the cables and it's not about tension right now, but now it's about leveling out the shuttles. On this shuttle, you see a cable going up. This is a pulling cable. So this shuttle will be pulled up by the other shuttle on the other side. So we know that this side of the shuttle is lower than the other one and it's about one and a half centimeters and I just measured it. And so we need to move the shuttle up by moving this nut upwards, about two centimeters. And at the same time, in the back, we have to release that with two centimeters. So this is uh, the adjustment that we ought to do. Not very complex, but still something that has to be done. There we go. I just adjusted the shuttle and it's a very easy mechanism to do it. The shuttle, which is too low, has to go up a bit. And therefore, you need to shorten the cable, which is going up. And the cable which is going down on the shuttle, that's the one that you have to make longer. And then tighten it all up, making sure you have the right uh, cable tension, and you should be all set to go. So we adjusted the shuttle which was too low, which was the one on the column without the motor. And now I hope uh, everything should be all right. So we're going to give it a try again, listen for a, a click at the same time. If it's not, we need to do some more adjustment. <laughs> I think that the clicks are exactly at the same time, so we are good. And now I'm going to lift it a bit more up and then I'll park it. And then we'll see um, how it goes. Now you see it going down and you hear the audible alarm. And you let it come down until it doesn't move anymore. And now it's resting on the locking system. And now it would be safe to work under the vehicle. I think all this is working just fine. And now I'm going to lower the lift all the way to the bottom. You'll see that if there's no load on the lift, uh, it's going to lower very slowly. And you will notice that as soon as I lower the lift, it's going to go up a bit and then down. Did you see that? It went up a bit enough to unlock the mechanism and now it's going down. But before we put the car up, we still have to put those bolts on this protection panel. So bolt it down to the ground and use this curtain to cover up this whole area. So I'm going to feed the curtain through the shuttle and you might find some resistance halfway. So um, then you might need some kind of a ruler to push it down because there is this narrow gap halfway. There we go. Feed the hook through it and then feed both hooks through the holes in the pillar. There we go. All we need to do now is to tighten up the bolts. All right, with everything now in place, and we already have tried lifting a lightweight car, the Lotus Elise, it's only 600 kilograms, that went like a champ. But now we're going to lift a heavier truck. We're going to lift a 4x4 Land Rover Defender 1110. The total weight is near to 2,000 kilograms. So let's see how that's going to go. Now I place it in park, and now it's locked, I hope. Now it's locked. All right, I'm just going to double check if the legs are still good, because that's the first time I lift it. I will do a little inspection of the pillars, making sure everything is still all right, and I see no major issues, so that's pretty good. But as you might have noticed, I've balanced the car out a bit, so the heavy part is closer to the pillar than the rear end, which is the lighter part. And that's just to reduce the leverage on the arms. So I think 
Yeah, this feels sturdy. So let's push it a bit higher up. Whoops, that's the chain. All right, and it's locked in place. So that seems to work quite nice and we can work under it. Uh, of course, it's not at the highest point, but I noticed that I still have my uh, pulley all the way on the top, so I would have to remove that one first without damaging the car. If we're gonna let it down, it's gonna go up a little bit and then it will descend. There we go. My final conclusion on this uh, two column four ton lift is that it's a very good and solid lift for the price you pay and it is CE certified and the installation of it takes you about eight hours if you do it carefully and I've done it for my first time and it went very smoothly. I had small issues with the instruction manual, especially on the control box where we have the terminal for all the cables. So there were some small changes. Because of the CE certification, they added on security features. But when I contacted Toolmania, everything was sorted out immediately and I got the proper connection, so we hooked it up. And for the rest, I really had no major issues at all. Everything was complete in the package, so that's good. And really, it looks like really solid and firm quality. Um, I have to say that I had to drill an extra little hole for one of the sensors, in fact for both sensors, the top sensor and the bottom lower sensor because that one of the holes was not really in the center where it was supposed to be. But I was just getting a little bit of a bigger bit and then just drilled that hole and everything was sorted out. And I think that's quite normal. The other little area where you may have to fiddle a bit is to get the curtain that protects the pillar, um, you know, this black curtain that we installed uh, through the, the, uh, the, the shuttle. Uh, inside the shuttle, the chain is connected there and there are some split pins and they were sticking out a bit, so I had to bend those a bit. But for the rest, uh, this is great. Um, I lifted the car a couple of times and no issue. Now, I have to say one thing about this lift. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I was trying to lift the BMW 420i and they have fixed lifting points and the arms were too big. I couldn't position the car just to get it lifted. So that's maybe something uh, where you need to look into. Um, probably would even be better if the arms could be a little bit shorter. Uh, but that's about it. Um, I will have to make an adaptation uh, for that, but that's okay. That's not a big deal. But I lifted the Lotus Elise and that worked fine, although the Lotus was not really nicely in balance. But that was just because of the lifting points on the Elise are not in balance. It's nothing to see with the lift at all. Uh, but for the rest, uh, this is a great lift. So if you're fed up with crawling on the floor and using jacks and axle stands, I think a lift like this is something you should get. Thank you for watching and there's two more videos coming. There's one about the maintenance of it and there's one of the operations and the specifications. And I think Toolmania really scored with this lift. Bye-bye.